Life's the next one. And that's a really bad way of describing it, but <laughs> it just doesn't really complement them. Is they banned it? Yes, she's banned it. Cool, Ted. Wow. Thank you. I mean, if you throw enough darts, you'll hit the board eventually. <laughs> clock's right twice a day. A broken one at that. Yeah. If your clock's only right twice a day, you might want to get it looked at. Just saying. That's why I said it's a broken one. <laughs> Even a broken one's Ten right twice a day. Remaining. What if the little arms have broken off? What if that's the way it's broken? Five seconds remaining. You've just out-leveled me, Ted. I, I, Sorry. I, I've got nothing. Uh, I've got nothing. Team secrets turn to picks. Spirit Breaker Van. Oh. Uh, still scared of the, yeah, the position four. There's no Earth Spirit. There's no Barra. There's no Nyx. There's none of these like natural uh, complementing fours to go with the uh, Dark Sir. Yeah. And that's why I still think, I think the Tusk kind of looks nice. I think Sand King or Tusk. Or Sand King, yeah. I forgot about that hero. Oh. Ten seconds remaining. Can they still fit the Omni into that lineup? Kind of hard, isn't it? Five PSG. Yeah. Remaining. If Seek, mm, no, not really. No. No. It's going to be some like awkward five Omni with a four Shadow Demon. Like, it technically it would work. Like, four Shadow Demon is fine, but then you have a five Omni. I'd... But maybe. Five yeah. darts. Mm -hmm. Nisha's Dude, could you support Lesh? Oh, you wanted in this game, but you yeah, were. Yeah, And then there's, there's the Spectre. The classic secret. There's that win. There we go. Yeah. Hard carry for Nisha. I also think with the Bat and the Earthshaker and even the SF roaming around, you're going to have enough kill potential. Spec and Horn in if, if needs be. I like that. These fights are going to be so scary for PSG in the yeah. mid game, especially because Leshrac doesn't want to buy BKB with the build currently. Only Sven's going to potentially buy one. And then you have Gollum. Ooh. He's very scary. A 10th pick jug. And PSG just want to respond to the Spectre and go, if we win these early fights, we're going to use this Leshrac, we're going to use this jug, and we're going to just take all your buildings. So, yep. yeah, this is a good uh, lineup from PSG, but again, the secret classic, and if they can survive the 25 minutes like they usually do. Yeah. It's, it's, very it's very fighty, Ted, isn't it? I hope so. But I, yeah, I, I think, like, like Rob's right, that Secret are going to, they're not going to want to fight too early, but when the fights do come, they're going to be big. Yep. Yeah. And they have, they have plenty of options in here as well, with the bat as well. Exactly, yeah. A lot of pickoff potential and. So delay them long enough for Nisha to come online and then the big fights start, and then Secret have a very strong lineup for that. As do PSG. It's going to mm -hmm. be good. Yeah. All right. Well, we're hoping for a bit of a brawl in our final game. This one will determine whether Secret reach their sixth grand final at ESL 1 or whether PSG LGD can make it their first ever. Let's find out how it goes with game number three. All series long, PSG LGD has tried to figure out how to be able to win the mid game against Team Secret. They tried winning the laning phase at the first game, managed to come back into game two, just got whomped by Team Secret. But this time around, game three, I feel like PSG LGD has gone all the eggs into the mid game basket. We've got a core Lesh, we've got a core Juggernaut, which we don't see too often right now, simply because, you know, he's not the best late game carry, but he's great mid game. Yeah, and uh, we do have the Sven, who is 18 and 6 at this tournament. That is quite the win rate. That is very impressive. But most of those have been carry Svens. This one is going to be a little bit of a switcheroo. PSG LGD have uh, dropped something a little interesting here. X Nova is going to be playing the Sven. I assumed it was going to be Sven Darkseer. Uh, but FY is playing the Shadow Demon. So I don't know if they're just uh, having the supports. They're going to have their five with the Darkseer at the start. They should still have Sven Darkseer, I think. Yeah, you, they should, right? Yeah, that lane, to me, makes the most sense by far. You just have these two tanky guys that run at you. Uh, I don't really quite understand if they would do it the other way around. Who knows? They could even aggro tri-lane. As we do have a Juggernaut against a Bat Rider, which is great. Counter pick shouldn't really be overly threatened by Sticky Napalm, like many safe lane carries are. And the early smoke aggression here as they're going to go to the left and they might just run into Yapsor who's got the high ground and should be perfectly fine. The smoke breaks, they know something's up. And who will be the first team is Yapsor that says it first. 
a little bit of a greeting to PSG LGD. May not have expected this little wraparound from them, but it was still in good position to get away, especially with the boots first. Every single one of these smoke firsts that I've seen, they uh, very rarely do we get the first blood. Seems like teams are always very well set up on high ground areas. That, of course, coming from our observer, JJ, our man in the sky, as well as Nox providing the stats for us. Vlad in the control room as Secret just holding the line here. PSG LGD have just kind of gone all in in this uh, bottom area of the map. Leave Juggernaut to top because they know can't really die. And trading two for two bounty rings here. What about our mid matchup? It's going to be Leshrac versus Shadow Fiends. And he's going to go for the build, right? He's going to go for the Yules build? Yeah. That's where SD is really good too, because you can't purge yourself with Yules. Right. Yules defensively on the SF doesn't do anything, so uh, the BKB is going to be pretty important here for him. Good body blocking. Managed to get with the creep wave, is going to kill all of it and do a lot of damage to Nisha there as he kind of shows up. And look at FY. He's going to do that thing that we see many supports do at this point. Oh, actually, I thought it was going to be poison, but instead he goes for disruption instead. Yeah, he denies him some creeps and. An SD against Spectre doesn't even feel that bad because of the Desolate. Yeah. You actually can potentially just wreck the Spectre. Uh, plus, you're able to save yourself. You spawn more illusions, you run them with you. It's actually quite a nice uh, counter. Plus, the break mechanic that you constantly apply yeah. onto the spec. And the illusions can, uh, in this sort of situation, under the tower, can help you just harass under towers. The illusions tank the tier one for you. But FY, he did what he uh, came to do. He just kind of uh, harassed a little bit. Leaves lane. Now they're trying to deal with the oh, bottom. Puppy almost dying there, but X Nova's, Nova's quite dead. low. And it looks like X Nova's going to be the one to first die. Puppy with the first blood chalice. Now, this is this is <laughs> not a surprise to X Nova. We saw he had, like, I think the third most deaths on average in the first 10 minutes. He is definitely a very sacrificial five position. He's going to be able to win chalice. Uh, this creep wave. They're hoping that they get a free lane up at top and they know that the Darkseer will cover just fine. So the idea behind it... Oh, it's Zai getting really low here. Why really gonna have any sort of follow-up is Zai already started eating the Tango, but I think what they want to do anyways is keep all the focus on this bottom lane. Don't have the Earthshaker rotate towards this mid lane. Yeah, One that's where things could get really dangerous. We're not expecting Leshrac just to die to, to raises, but one Fisher and a double raise nuke. Plus, I think Lush does fine against SF. Yeah. Early. Uh, you have kill potential on him too, which is the really annoying part for SF. But SF, with the help of the Earthshaker, of course, can get kills. And that's exactly why Yapsor hanging around this area. to be invised up. Oh, this could be a massive no idea of it. Fisher's gonna go out. There it is. Doesn't give the kill to the SF, takes it for himself with that Fisher. And what a great tip. rotation. It's got to be so frustrating for maybe. He wanted that 1v1. And he's denied that much, the SF. Getting that free lane for that small period of time now means he's 11 and 3. Still a big lead for the Leshrac, 16 and 5, but another Fisher block. As Yapsor returns once again, maybe he's going to run down river. Yapsor is just going to try and. Harass him up as best as possible. Get the south. One, just chasing him to the left. Here and there, as Yapsor doesn't have a fissure for another five seconds, and X Nova's now gonna come in, but he's gonna lay out the stun onto the Shadow Fiend. They shouldn't have enough damage for this. Only yeah. level two lightning, no ulti. If you go this build cap, it's really hard for you to get kills like that. You have to rely on your level six. Once you get your level six, though, kills come aplenty. You get on top of the SF can only short raise you if you land a stun. You know, I kind of like this uh, five position matchup, uh, or rather FY's four, Shadow Demon against the Batrider. Because as long as you get a stick, right? He's going to spam Sticky Napalm. You're going to spam Shadow Poison. And very, very often, Batrider's not going to feel comfortable fighting you because you're also getting these really big stacks. And if FY actually lands one last one, He's it might be the kill. It is. That's a solo kill right there for FY. And that, that's why you like the Shadow Demon versus the Batrider. 
two to one as PSG LGD got their first kill on the board. X Nova's gonna be blocked out there by the Fisher. Puppy tried to get in front of him for some body blocking on the way out as well. But the double stun. X Nova getting a little bit low, but he's pinging. He's gonna fight Puppy, but I feel like he should just run back. Yeah, the Dark Series on him. his way. He's a little close, and he can pop uh, the Mango if he wants to go for the stun. Now, Chalice is close enough. Might be able to go for it. The Fisher, he's going to try and separate him. He needs to be able to save Puppy here, and there it is. Blocks out Chalice, who had the Ion Shell on him. Both supports just wasting each other's time, really. Zai, his bounty rune, by trying to deny it, and he, in fact, will take his own, and it's going to be a two for two split. <laughs> Early smoke from Yapsor. We don't see too many smokes from Team Secret, but Yapsor is closing in on Soul Ring. If he could get one more kill on maybe Slushrack, help mid one catch up again in CS, it would be a big win. But instead, he's going to run to FY, who actually plants a ward, so Yapsor probably got that intel. Bring some items for mid one. They bring a sentry. Oh, they yeah, they got out. it. So they indeed know. Ah, give it to mid one too. Give him that gold. They know. As long as he has a good landing phase, right, he should show up in this game pretty strong. And X Nova gonna run into Puppy here, but still only level two. Everyone's just rotating. And look at X Nova. He's just booking it straight to mid one. They do manage to get the disruption. There is going to be the haunt out. Mid one's going to be hit by the storm bolt, but X Nova doesn't have any damage FY's himself. Getting low. FY is going to be eventually run down by Nisha. With the fatal bonds on, maybe it made it so the Lestrak just really couldn't commit too much, even as the Sven got the stun on the SF. It's not the worst trade in the world for them there. No. The haunt being used, not too bad. I might just die here. I actually knows. Gonna get healed up though, and Yaps are still sticking around the area. X Nova gonna lead with the stun, the follow up from the Lush Rack. This also lets them get a potential a lot of poisons, the long range disruption, one more poison out, but mid one, he's already healed enough. Yaps are once again just great positioning by him, always being able to get these defensive fissures. And they know they want to go aggressive on the SF to at least trade out kills to even up maybe his lane and. The Shadow Fiend should be a very easy kill for them, theoretically. So they're gonna run into Chalice here. Ooh. Chalice actually running through the SF, but the, the safety of X Nova will be fine. And he's gonna reset just a little bit, but uh, they did use the haunt just to get the kill onto the Shadow Demon. No other kills were exchanged. And it does mean that the Jug is having a very free lane up the top. Like yeah. we talked about, it's impossible for the Batrider. It's, un unless Ame really messes up, it should be impossible for him to die. What do you think about this support spend so far? Every single time I look at one of these ganks, I always think to myself, like, man, an Earth Spirit or, or um, Spirit Breaker or something would have provided a lot more damage to What these they're ganks. probably trying to do is bait Secret uh, into thinking it was going to be the carry spend. Yeah. Switch things around. They last picked the Jug. So you have the hard counter to the Bat Rider as well. But Radiant it's a bit risky. You're hiding your draft at the cost of having a hero that you don't really want to have. Bit of uh, suboptimal support hero, Patat, says they are going to go on to Nisha. A lot of damage coming out from that Ion Shell, but the Fisher with the Fatal Bonds means X Nova is actually dropping really fast here for the Yami Slash. Sticks on Nisha all the way, but all that healing! And it actually ends up on the worst possible side. Yeah. If he could have stuck on the Spectre, if the last bounce had stuck on him, he would have been able to get a spin and perhaps Nisha would have died, but... Yeah, Nisha definitely would have died. He had no dagger. At least PSG LGD have created the space to maybe take this Tier 1 tower. That was so unlucky. Yeah. It was very lucky, and then it became pretty terrible for him, as Ame did rotate down for this. Gonna try and get the disruption, but PSG LGD, I feel like they're getting a little bit ahead of themselves. The Bat Rider is now rotated to the tier one. He's gonna try and cut off some of these heroes. He doesn't have the lasso, but he can slow him down with a sticky napalm. FY, he's definitely gonna be caught here. Disruption going out. They're really gonna try and fight this one. Ame showing up with the spin, only doing a limited amount of damage. Now they do have the lasso. He picked up level seven off of that kill. That means they're gonna be able to maybe catch Ame, but they actually can't do enough. And now, maybe he's here to be able to run down Yapsor. That's gonna be one. Hunt out, doing a lot of damage.
Action maybe he dies underneath the tier one tower. Nisha didn't even have to commit for it. He goes for the back line. He's gonna go for X Noble. One more swing. Tell me he gets it. He does. A long range swing from Nisha finishes off the tanky Sven. This juggernaut doesn't have TP, so they're on the hunt. War does go down, but looks like yeah, so we're not gonna try to cut off his retreat and instead just farm it up a little bit. It seemed like an okay situation for BSG LGD before they went for this long wraparound from FY. I mean, they were just desperate to, to find a hero, but I felt like they could have taken the tier one there. I mean, this feels like the story of all three games. They yeah. get a little bit over aggressive under tier one towers in secret response. Uh, despite all that, they were still able to win game number one, but game number two, Nisha. Oh, the split earth is just a bit shy. Maybe he felt like he wasn't close enough to hit it off the disruption, trying to go for the lightning slow first. They will secure themselves the bounty runes. Yeah, three bounty runes. It's great for PSG LGD. As they're trying to cut down the small net worth lead that Secret has right now by taking towers, taking map control. So I felt like uh, PSG LGD, from my perspective anyway, Blitz, I, I thought they were going to walk away from the laning phase with a net worth advantage. Me too. I thought uh, that bottom lane should have been okay for them. The mid lane wins. Because even with the kill, the Lesh is still really far ahead of the SF. Yeah. The net worth. Plus the top lane is supposed to win very handily. And we saw that early on. But for some crazy reason, uh, Secret still have a net worth lead. Combination of Yapsor's successful rotations, which is let him up there in net worth, and then also the way they've shut out this Darkseer. He really, Chalice has not gotten that much out of the off lane. Now that all these heroes keep on showing up in his lane, really trying to pressure this tier one tower. They're gonna go for it though with a Fatal Bonds, threatening the golem. They're gonna drop it now, long enough to be able to get the lasso on him maybe once again. Maybe shows up in the bottom lane and dies almost immediately. Ex Nova, a very optimistic TP there, my friend. <laughs> and the Yules being queued up by mid one. Wants that jump combo. And look how much damage he's getting on this mid tier one while the Leshrac's still dead. He might even be able to uh, claim the tower. And they're pinging like crazy. This is his time to recover right now. Yeah. He's still quite far behind the Leshrac when it comes to net worth. But it's just sort of the nature of the heroes. Secret just is really not letting that Leshrac get the ball rolling when it comes to killing heroes and then taking towers. And it's buying the SF a lot of comeback time is eight to two. 1,000 net worth lead for Team Secret at 12 minutes in. He's securing an Arcane Rune for the Leshrac. Who might just need to take a little bit of farming time here. I mean, how important is that Yule Scepter, do you think, for fighting against Team Secret? Uh, it's a really nice hard reset. It sets up kills on the Shadow Fiend. It makes it so that uh, you always get to jump. It's good to set up on Yaps, or it acts as a very good defensive tool, too. Plus the hard dispel. Speaking of Yaps, or he uh, did go with the Soul Ring. And Tranquil Boots, so it's the full support, easy regen build. So we can always stay on map and always get some farm out of these lanes. But now, we're gonna find Puppy here. Maybe he's making his way over. He knows the Team Seeker are very likely to still take this fight. But the Fate of Bonds on to. Now they managed to get the Lasso out as well. Disruption going down. Thanks to that Fisher. They managed to stall up PSG LGD long enough. They can follow with the Echo Slam to kill the Shatter Demon. The spin on top of multiple heroes. But now they do manage to get the hold on. And maybe once again, they just keep on doing this. And they beat him down with the help of Yapter. And all these heroes, they're tanky enough. Much like game one where um, he's got to fight his way out. The Omni Slash is going to need a spin away in two seconds. Seconds time almost has it. Actually, does manage to get a surge from the low ground from his Dark Seer. A really good play by Chalice to ensure at least the carry doesn't die, and maybe they kill Zai as well. Give the extra boost of movement speed to Exnova with the Ion Shell. He'll get the dominating streak of Zai. So that that fight was terrible for PSG LGD, but at least it ends on a happy note. I need them to in this series to stop trying to kill Puppy. Yeah, like, it's not worth it for you. Uh, they keep trying to do it. He didn't even have rock. They keep getting baited into going on this hero. And Warlock is one of those heroes that you think of as very, very soft and paper. But, I mean, he's got a heal. And he's got decent stats. 
pulled the creep wave off the tower, but it doesn't matter. Mid one recognizes that it's low enough he can commit, and PSG LHD. I mean, they're trying to commit for the safe lane tower, but Zai actually thinks that maybe he can defend Zai. it or something. They're doing a lot of fatal bonds damage. Look at that. He does get it. And that's impressive considering Batrider. Not a great animation. One of the lower base damages that you'll get, as we see here again. I, they do it under the shrine, so there's so much time to respond. He's got yeah. 1,200 HP, raindrops, and a stick. Plus his heal. He hides in the corner. Also, that duo has no damage. That support duo? Just not that great at being able to burst down these heroes because the Sven is pretty low on damage. They needed maybe to get a, a bit closer, but by the time he shows up, the Bat Rider and the SF are already there. Yapsor hit that really good Fisher as well. That's why we don't see Sven often as a uh, as a support because half of his toolkit doesn't actually help you at all as a yeah. support. His cleave and his ulti are effectively just kind of useless on you because you have no items. You're never going to really find opportunities to utilize that as I. Finds the pickoff, lines it up for the raises for mid one. The healing ward's gonna go down to Ame. Gonna spin his way out of this one. His chalice oh, is Yule's there. Are they gonna be able to slow him down? Yeah, they've got him. The upheaval, the sticky napalm. What I also like about this is Batrider looks so good. And, and I think a large part is the fact they've got two supports with just excellent reach, right? Yes. We've got the golem that can drop just for a, you know, a small second. It's all the Bat Rider needs to close that distance and goes with the Fisher. If, you, if you're a fan of PSG LGD though, calm down. Everything's still okay because your top two cores still lead the game. And they only need like one really good pick off to start breaking away. They're gonna try and go for Nisha here, but seeing the mass teleports. Okay, I like this. PSG LGD just kind of resetting and saying, you know, that's good enough. We actually forced a lot of TPs. Yeah, this Jug is still getting very good farm. Uh, this Lush Rack is still Ooh. getting very good farm despite the deaths. That's that's not good for a PSG LGD though. Uh, yeah, I'm sure has a blink dagger at 16 minutes. So Impact now you've got a game. big team fight item. Still, despite all that and the 13 to 3 kill lead and the mid tower that they took, plus the deny tower at bottom, it's only 1k in favor of Team Secret. Yeah. They could just find a way to take this tier 1 mid start opening up the map a bit more for themselves. Yeah, I still think this is a very 50-50-ish game. Is they're gonna run into Zai here? Omni Slash, oh no, it went out to the Golem! Great use of that by Puppy! Now the Yule Scepter, they know he still has mids, they can't mark him in, but a great Fisher! Now the Echo Slam from Yamza, revealing the Blink Dagger! Killing the carry of PSG LGD. We said that was the high point. Maybe Nisha, if they could actually create this out though, this would be okay. Zai's gonna TP in. They're gonna use the glyph to make sure the creep survives, so Nisha's still gonna fall. And now all this AoE damage. He actually lassoed up the last track, but he's taking too much. He will be able to fly away as Yapsor once again comes to the rescue. Bouncing back, Chalice. They do manage to get the storm, but Yule Scepter stopping him. Managed to get off that, uh, that surge down, and now X Nova slowed down to a crawl. Yapsor. Can blink in front of if he wants to make that kind of commitment. The FY is going to come forward. They do manage to kill Zai with a disruption onto the SF, slowing down this damage. Still another enchant totem hitting on X Nova, and they're just going to let loose the ultimate just in case. The SF wanted to make sure that they could not go. And they don't damage enough to get the kill, but still that Juggernaut pickoff is going to be the big bounty for Team Secret. They did lose the Spectre during that time. So Jug still leads the leaderboard, but Ame has just been not so on point with his ultimates. Yeah. I mean, well countered by PSG LGD, and at one point was a little unlucky, but also just doesn't feel like PSG LGD is setting up these fights very successfully. No, it feels very rushed. Yeah. We're gonna see here again at bottom lane, Ame. You see Hero just cast it immediately. But, like, secret. It feels like every single fight, PSG LGD, even though they're the ones starting the engagement, Secret has more heroes there. Yeah, it's just really how they operate. Don't let lone heroes get picked off. Try to save everybody. Get out as clean as possible. Do you see Nisha? I, he knows he messed up too. Yeah. He got caught mid. I was very surprised to see him in mid lane out of all the lanes, but also past the river at all. So far in the battle of... Burning's tier one carries. Oh, that's right. Burning did say both. Uh, he had Ame and Nisha as his, as his kind of top tier S tier carries. And uh, right now, anyway, Team Secret is coming out on top when it comes to this series. 
as far as their carrying in this game. I actually feel like it, it, it's come more down to everybody else on the team, right? Because the games have oftentimes become one so one-sided. And Ame, they need him to perform here. Zero, one, and two. Not the kind of impact that they're hoping from their star player who is going to go for the Radiance Juggernaut build. He's going to need to get something like a Lincoln's though at some point, I think. Just needs HP. There's so many different ways to burst him. They have two different ways to cut through uh, the spin TP, which really cuts the Juggernaut's effectiveness. Oh, and there's the Radiance from the Spectre. This is a scary item. They do have Healing Ward, which is one of the best ways to deal with it. Yeah. But then, uh, Secret, they also have Beto Bonds. We've seen how effective that has been in many of these fights. 18 to 5, 1k gold lead for Secret. PSG LGD, every single time they lose a team fight, they just split up and farm. Everybody else is still hitting creeps. They still have their tier 1 tower available to the bottom lane. It does seem like one of the strengths of PSG LGD is that even when they're losing fights, they still don't fall that far behind to net worth. Yeah, that's the strength of both these teams, so, in a way. Kind of weird. They yeah. just have cores that continue to pick up pace. We see our odds. GG bet odds, very favorable for Team Secret. As this is, I mean, just watching game one and game two does seem like Secret once again are having that advantage by 25 minutes. We'll see if they could get another pick off on Nisha. It would be massive. The purge is slowing him down. It does a lot, but nobody from PSG LGD can follow. That delay looked like it took a while. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He's got a shrine active. I'm surprised that they decided to go for the drug uh, radiance, by the way. Considering you have the SD illusions. Oh, yeah. What do you think a, a better build would be then? Uh, to fuse Manta or... Yeah. Plus you have SD, like you can just send the illusions out to deal with waves, like they'll just push out naturally, they're very strong. Yeah. You have your own Radiance uh, when you disrupt the S, uh, the Spectre. Mm -hmm. So like, feels a little bit redundant in a way. Die, he knows he's been spotted. Smoke's gonna pop, X Nova. Oh, flame break only knocking him to the side, not backwards. And he's gonna turn around, he managed to get the Storm Bolt off. So Zai's smoke is gonna be ruined. They do get a heavy push in this top lane. Maybe managed to accomplish that. There's gonna be the haunt. They thought they found him in time, but Yavsor, who was smoked up running this direction with his blink dagger, is just a bit too far away. And this is a great opportunity. PSG LGD, I think at this point, you definitely try and take a fight. You just saw a smoke break. You saw a haunt be used. You've got your radiance as well. Yeah, I think the timing is very good. I'd like to see them smoke here. There's no way you're waiting for the full Manta before you take a fight, right? No, no way. But it's in fact secret that are gonna go for it. I could see both teams just smoking into each other right now. Yes, the LGDs, they're sneaky. making sure there's no wards. With the double damage rune, I mean, this is one of those smokes where an opportunity presents itself, and PSG LGD, they're on the wrong side of the map right now. Tier two creeps. Doing a lot of damage, they probably think to themselves, like, okay, let's just take this tower, perhaps, but all the meanwhile, this Roshan is dropping fast. Maybe they think that secret's just straight up smoked, still looking around. Yeah. That's gonna be an early Aegis for Nisha. So we see that uh, very cool Roshan animation on stage. And a very fortunate DD rune for Nessa, who doesn't really have a right click build. Yeah. Allows that to happen is now they go for the smoke. You know, you could say it's lucky, but I feel like Team Secret is always getting the power runes. Radiance yeah, you know? partially because they control the map. Attack. Yeah. That is what will always scale in your favor. They spot the Spectre mid, not the best target that they could go for because there is a Warlock Golem that will follow up. So they want to go on Puppy oh, instead. They try to catch Puppy. They do manage to get the really long range perk. Get a rock, turn around, just rock immediately. Nisha's going to run in. God Strength is going to be popped. They managed to get the disruption onto this Spectre. They're going to try and blow up that first life as quick as possible, but. There is a position for good upheaval. They also got a really good Fatal Bond, so a lot of PSG LGD is quite low. They just need to retreat, I think, at this point. Maybe cannot afford anybody to take more damage. And Chalice, Fissured up, Secret. 
They see that PSG LGD is waiting for their offlaner. They're not going to abandon Tim. So that wasn't too bad. PSG LGD almost immediately taken away that Aegis. That was great for them. They, uh, they got the rock out of the way, plus they got the Aegis that they just picked up. They smoked for that too. So you so, just go again, right? Yeah, I can see them making another aggressive maneuver. They don't have the SD ult or the Darkseer wall, but they're not as dependent on those abilities to fight. And that's the best part about playing Leshrac in this meta is he's always down to fight. Yeah. He's your two position that pushes out waves, farms up everything, never really far, falls far behind. And he's always ready to go with team fights. That's why we see Sumail go for, for example, like that move speed boot to travel build yep. so that he can be as global, as mobile as possible. We saw that last game and uh, well, Maybe actually doesn't trust that same build. He's going to go for a faster Octarine. Uh, it's still general movement speed build. He just doesn't go the Kaya Yasha. As Kaya, Yules would travel. And that's fine. He just thinks he needs more HP, which yeah. I would agree with. Oh, especially against the Yules SF and this Earthshaker. Yeah. They've got hard lockdown of plenty. Shattered even. Trying to go for that 25-minute bounty room. Does manage to get it and gets out. PSG LGD, they actually just got all four. Yeah, now this gold lead is cut to barely 1k and this was kind of a concern as we saw the kill score get racked up but the actual gold never really fluctuated it's been 1k this entire time after roshan it got all the way up to two but that's the largest lead that i've personally seen this game we saw from the uh the bounty tracker there gotten about 3,000 of their net worth advantage on the side of psg lgd from all the extra bounties that they've gotten EG, Liquid, Secret, top three when it comes to fast Roshans. All the West, the top tier Western teams. LGD near the bottom of that list with Alliance. I mean, Alliance lost all but two of their games, so it's not too surprising. They didn't get a lot of opportunities oh, as they nice get the jump. Lasso. They're going to try and get him with the Haunt here. Throw everything they have in this juggernaut. Try and count it down to the ground. They do manage to get him. No buyback available either, so this is not a fight that PSG LGD can win. All they can do is try and stem the loss as much as possible. But Zai, he just keeps on running forward. He managed to find now FY, bouncing back from the flame break. Mid one, jumping forward. They're going to try and go for the center. And Sun, two minutes to get a really good wall on as well with this soul buy. But maybe they can. Uh, they're just running out of damage at this point, especially since maybe couldn't successfully TP in. If he'd gotten that boot to travel and maybe been able to run down some heroes with his Pulse Nova, they could have killed something, but... I think they canceled, actually, because of mid one's BKB pop. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. It's very hard to fight that at that point, and just a good jump overall by Secret. They still have the Warlock Rock, and I really... I need to see this Juggernaut and this build sort of play out. Yeah. It's been a disappointing performance for Ame, who's 0-2-2 two two right now. Secret, win a fight, push in top, and they don't immediately break apart. They'll send the uh, the SF to bottom lane. So we're going to look at that fight again. Just that rapid initiation, especially with Yapsor ready to go on the side. Even if there was a bunch of PSG LGD heroes ready to jump in, Yapsor could have just echoed slammed them instead of committing for the Juggernaut. Yeah. So it was pretty much a, a well set up fight for Secret. And I feel like that's the big difference between these two teams. We've seen LGD rush a lot of their engagements. I mean, most of the time, they're sending their Jug in for, uh, first to try to be in the forefront. He gets jumped on, and they have so much control that they can just burst him every time. As soon as they get the Batrider That's a time. lasso and a haste rune. They've got a Yule Scepter for this last track, but I don't know how he survives. They're going to drop the Golem. Yapsor yeah, gets on top of him as well with his Blink Dagger and Chan Totem hit. And just booking it over there. Oh. Er, that wasn't the play. Mid one accidentally Yule Sceptering himself. He did get the kill though. On the at the last hit on the lash. Yep. So he's okay for gold. Absolutely. Structures are fortified. Manta Illusions pushing out top lane, but secret. Yules. Fisher setting up these raises, just keeping X Nova controlled up, and I don't know about this blitz. Maybe he's, was still dead. Ame was only just keeping to that shrine. I feel like you can't afford these kind of pickoffs. Ame just kind of challenging here, looking to kill that creep wave. He's gonna spin in and out as they're gonna get Fisher in from the side. They do manage to get the Omni slash onto Puppy, so that'll be a freebie. Not sure how much they can chase, especially as they lose their centaur. 
trade uh, the Darkseer creep for Puppy, so the gold is actually pretty even. <laughs> that, that is true. It's the XP, and you just need to get Ame on the board, I feel. Yeah. Like he needed that kill. Um, mass rotations down to bottom lane, where once again, Zai is leading the charge. To find anything, though. It's looking in the tree line, but looks like... PSG LGD have learned their lesson from the previous game. Seeker will hunt you. Once they get a Scythe of Ice on this uh, Shadow Fiend, or it's just one more thing they have to worry about, right? For the Juggernaut when it comes to that hard initiation. Yeah, that's why you, I feel like you would have preferred to see a different build from him. But that's okay. He's hard committed to this, and who am I to say? Double boots of travel. Feels like Team Secret is everywhere around the map. Especially when they have so much mobility and movement speed and blink daggers as well. I believe that was an Octarine I just saw finished up. Has to be for the Lesh, right? Yeah, our Lesh rack is yeah. got that complete now. He's gonna go for a BKB next. That's and his counter, I think, to the Spectre uh, dispersion. Yeah. But at the same time, like, a BKB would feel I think a lot better for this next engagement how much magic damage they have. I think so too, but I imagine the reason why he goes for it is for the raw HP that it serves you as well. Yeah. Plus, Octarine just feels really good on Lash. If they can success, if they get this Octarine and they can win the next Radiant's fight, it'll mean our, our Lash track is going to scale better later into the game, right? Yeah. That's definitely something that PSG LGD, they got to be a bit worried about right now because this game has stalled out. The 4,000 net worth for Team Secret. I can't imagine you're going to get one of those giant windfalls you got. Game one, especially with this kind of movement around the map, always finding these pickoffs. Dude, Zai's been everywhere. Zai. In this game. How can you stop this? <laughs> this guy when he's running at like 500 movement speed? He has set up the last like six kills, I think, for Team Secret, and he's found cores every single time. He's not finding some FY, finding either Ame or he's finding maybe just punishing them and now top two net worths in the game belong to secret the net worth lead it just continues to steadily climb sf getting in position right now gets disrupted they're trying to save chalice here zai still on the hunt doesn't have his ulti quite yet he's gonna get purged but is there a follow up vacuum, vacuum as well X Nova didn't have that storm hammer ready to go just yet. Now they're gonna give the upheaval. X Nova knowing that he's in trouble. They actually say jump into the high ground. They managed to get the juggernaut. Can they lock him down? They managed to get the spin. Now they get the shrine. shrine. Can they actually fight underneath this one? They've got the healing ward as well. That one dies. As mid one committed his BKB, the Yule Scepter. Oh, okay, they just managed to stop. Chalice in his place as soon as he goes for the surge. PSG LGD actually thought they're gonna go back in for this fight, but now they've been final flails up. And now they lost their carry as the lasso, the double hit from the raise with the fatal bonds. That wipes PSG LGD on their side of the map. So Team Secret are healthy enough. They're ready to go for a high ground push. The creep wave is right here. They've got the golem down on the ground. Zai, the perfect timing back for his ultimate. And the Juggernaut didn't get his off the entire engagement. Yeah. They needed that damage. It looked like it was going to be a great reset for them too. The Echo Slam didn't do nearly enough. They got the Shrine off. They got the Healing Ward. But just no real opportunities for them to fight. I think part of the problem, too, is the fact that they're Sven, that they picked up. We just haven't seen it do anything. Yeah. It didn't win the lane. Uh, he doesn't really contribute nearly as much as Puffy does when we just compare the five positions. And it looks even worse when, as you said, this whole entire drafting concept was to be able to give you a better carry last yes. pick, right? Where you were like, ah, oh, you thought it was just Sven, but surprise, it's actually Juggernaut. But our Juggernaut has had no game whatsoever either. Yeah, so they're going to... Uh... You see the fight right here. Ame, you can see mid ulti, gets Yule Sceptered up. I mean, Secret, this should be a bad fight for them. They chase uphill, they don't yeah. kill the Jug, the Rock doesn't really do anything, everyone's at full HP. But Ame just does no damage, especially as you can see, he was like totally out of that fight. Yeah. Somebody must have made the call to try and fight again, but Ame has not had much of a game. And there's no maybe, so they pretty much are out of damage at that point. Plus the Fatal Bonds. Can we actually compare the uh, five position hero damage? Oh yeah, because the Fatal Bonds is doing massive amounts of work in this game. 
see the damage dealt. Our Sven only at 5.7k. Nice! Vacuum Stormhammer! That's a beauty, but they do manage to get their four staffs as well. Their BKB is just low. It's low, though. They're going to be able to finish them off. The Spectre Illusion's running forward with the Radiance Burn as well. Puppy just saying, I'm going to give up my life. Lay it down just to make sure at least mid one escapes from this. And it looks like Yapsor will as well as Ame spots him a little bit late. They finally get a pretty decent fight together. Darkseer setting all of that up. And PSG LGD, they have really good pushing power, so we they might win go for a fight. It. They're going to be able to go for tier twos, and I say absolutely go for it here. Go for the full lane of Brax. At least try and force the buyback out of the Spectre, which we know she actually doesn't have. PSG LGD, they got to play for a win. And part of what uh, allowed them to win game number one was their decisiveness. And they're going to go for it again. They see the opportunity. Secret. They don't want a hard engage. Mid one doesn't have buyback himself or the BKB. So this should be a free tier three tower. And all of a sudden, PSG LGD, they found their way into the base. They might actually be even in racks after this. They do have Echo Slam as well as Lasso. So PSG LGD do need to be careful as they leave the base to make sure none of their carries get picked off. But Zai, he's not going to go for it. Team Secret playing it super safe. And PSG LGD really evening out the game. They just lost their mid lane of barracks. Managed to win a fight, take secrets away. Goes to show that even if secret is ahead, five, six, seven thousand net worth, this game can turn on a dime against them. We saw the hero damage difference between X Nova and the Warlock, but yeah, what was uh, oh, 14,000 compared to 6.6k for the Sven. Not to mention our old Warlock can also do some healing. BKB oh God, to the top the lane. They're gonna run into FY here. A quick pounce from Team Secret, an easy kill. But nothing that is game defining. So I'm not sure if uh, Team Secret to feel confident enough. Well, no. Maybe just uh, a Shadow Demon pick off is enough for them to do Roshan. We'll have to see. It is going to be a tough fight, though. PSG LGD, they have the Wall of Replica up for the Darkseer. And there's pretty much no better engagement than a Roshan fight for that ability. Yeah, they pop back with FY. They want to hard commit to this. And Ame coming in from the side is going to be able to kill some vision to start things off. Just make sure they have an advantage. There's going to be the hot mid one pops BKB. And in turning, there's going to be the goal. They drop the SF ultimate. They will be able to finish off the Shadow Demon. That's a dive back. But now the other side is six on the only hitting the rock. The rock doesn't even die to all of that. The SF is fine. Nisha's at half health and he's ready to go back in as well as he sees that Ame feels uncomfortable with this. He's actually just going to keep going. He doesn't really have a ton of uh, like backup here. Yeah, the SD fought back for that and died. He's gonna get stunned up right now. The Lincolns is popped, but he manages his way off. He's just trying to stick around the wall at this point. Yeah. All the Secret have to do is just play patient. They do have this big push that's coming in the bottom lane. It's nice, but Secret, no. Man, losing a tier three there is, isn't gonna change the game. What is gonna change the game is this Roshan fight. 30 seconds for this SD. The wall finally finishes up. They still have the big Echo Slam. Zai went in for it, but in the wrong order. Oh, they're back in, back in. This is a four man. A four man done. Ame spinning on in. The splitter is only going to be able to catch the warlock here. The self kills on to mid one. They need to be able to finish him off the radiant burn. He brings him down. Echo Slam now from Yantor. That's going to be able to finish off the spin in the dark here, but Ame is still plenty healthy. He's killing more. It's not enough to keep Ame alive. He does have buyback. They need to be able to get Ame out of here and reset. He actually spins and goes for it. TP's away. Decides better. Thinks Yantor is going to kill. He may be able to have it too, especially when maybe. Fresh BKB, but Zai was the buyback. Zai does not have the last, so they have the beat of bonds on maybe as well. Slowing out of the upheaval. He self fuels Ame spinning in, trying to help him out the force. They need a disruptive move, trying to chase him down. They need to be able to save baby. They need all of them, but no. And sometimes it's go. Spectre, Dagger trying to get to him. The purge, he's catching up. He's catching up. He burns him. Ever so barely, he gets the die back on maybe. And Ame, he's still trying to fight this one out. He sees some supports. He's going to be able to go for Puppy here. Chase him down with the spin. A self golem though, explosion. It's, it's just all they, they already broken the lid. They're gonna be able to grab with the lasso as well. He hits the enchant on him, he's dead. He has a five back. Dark tears up in five, Sven up in 15. And secret, they don't have the power, I think, to take this Roshan, but they're gonna try. Actually, Roshan's super low, it's only a 2k HP. 
Darkseer, he's gonna be too far away. Ame, he can't get there in time. He can't TP out, so they are gonna be able to get the Aegis and Chief. Now they have to make sure they don't get picked off here. There's no lasso, but there is a Yule. Ame, Ame's still in the area. He's, he's gonna, gonna try be careful. Do the storm hammer into the back and once again with the wall. Oh, great setup. Nisha's in trouble, but they still manage to finish off the Darks here. But Nisha, he's about to fall here. His first life is gone. A very healthy Ame, but X Nova's being beaten down by this uh, Golem as he takes out from the flame break bit by bit. Looks like the Radiance burn. They will be able to find him. Ame has his Lincoln's broken. They're gonna try and haunt over into him, but he's underneath their shrine right now. And I think Seeker realizing that they're not so sure about this fight. Zai's gonna keep the Seeking Napalm up, but they're just gonna go for every other hero. It is it Ame. He does manage to get the purge. It is gonna be breaking nature for a little while, but Ame wants to be able to get Zai instead. He's being kited so much by this. He's got the ult. He's down for the last one. He's holding him down. He's just beating a one, two, three, and that's it. Five dead from LG with no buybacks. 30 seconds left on the majority of PSG LGD. You see Yapsor hold his heart right there as everyone bought back for that fight. And Secret barely hold on. What a fantastic job they did with kiting Zai live throughout that entire engagement. Absolutely insane by our Bat Rider, just always kiting these heroes around with the constant sticky napalm, setting Nisha up in a good position. It's not going to be the end of the game, but it's a one fight for Team Secret. They and it are... looks so good for PSG LGD here. Yes. When they stack them all together. But he managed to get once again that vacuum. They have the Omni Slash with the wall out, but still, they're doing so much damage to Nisha that all the dispersion damage just bounces back, kills the Dark Seer, brings the spend super low. Once again, oh, the high so, found somebody. The ultimate challenge is going to be hit by the Golem as well. He does have that surge. Another Yule Scepter going down. They're going to pop the BKB from mid one. They really want the Starks here. They saw how much power he does in these teams. They're all slow. He's going to come from the side. They managed to get the vacuum out, but Chalice is still dead. Maybe he's going to try and run down mid one, but he realizes he can't commit, especially with Nietzsche in the way. So instead, maybe they can go for Sai, who slides out more. Right now, managed to get the flame break, bump over to the side. Still another 40 seconds for the carries. Juggernaut and Sven. They're gonna Shattered go for throw. They're gonna go straight for the throw. They know. They saw it. They saw the way maybe. Oh, they couldn't defend. One versus five. Maybe he's certainly not gonna be able to do the same. But their damage is so slow. Maybe finally makes his way back to the fountain here. He's gonna have to do this by himself. A glyph is gonna go out. He's got the ulti. Ame, I mean, if he could just buy like 10 seconds time, enough for the Sven and Ame to be able to come back up. But now the throne is exposed. Even if the damage is slow, it is inevitable here. Maybe he finds his opportunity, but they're going to call it here even before they go for the bat ride. And that is it, Team Secret. LGD has managed to make it a little bit close. Team Secret closing out in the end of the game three. They are going to the grand.